Carlsbad, people, purpose, and impact. An essential podcast for those who live, work, visit, and play in Carlsbad. Good morning and welcome, everyone. My name is Brett Schonsenbach. I'm the president and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce, and I'm your host this morning. And I'm very excited to have with me Carol Diedrich, the CEO of Girl Scout San Diego. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. It's so great to be with you yeah, today. So happy to have you. Did I say your last name right? You did. All right. Great. Coming from a last name like mine, I'm always sensitive to that. Mine's Schonsenbach, and it you know gets butchered all the time. So <laughs> want to make sure. And I wanted right from the outset to let everybody know that um, Girl Scout San Diego was our Regional Community Impact Award winner for our CBAT Awards in 2021. So congratulations for that. Thank you so much. That was a great honor Absolutely. and a wonderful surprise. Yes. Well, that was great. Yeah. We have a lot of different topics to go all over the place, but we have to start right off with the topic that's on everybody's mind, because cookie sales are in full tilt right now. And I've heard, say it ain't so, Carol, that there's supply chain issues with Girl Scout cookies. Please tell me they're all resolved. Oh, I wish I could. (laughs) Oh, I wish I could. But it is, well, the cookie program is the largest entrepreneur program in the world for girls. It is our most popular program. We have over 10,000 girls participating, and it is extraordinary. Now, along with it, the reason it is so extraordinary is because girls are learning some pretty significant skills at a very young age. So we have girls that are five years old all the way through 17, learning business ethics, goal setting, decision making, money management, and, you know, people skills. And what makes this year so incredible is that we have a real life issue going on right yeah. now no, with true. with production challenges? So girls are learning about inventory and yeah. inventory control. Yeah, well, uh, real life, you know, nothing beats real life when it comes to uh, preparing you for the future. Maybe even before COVID, I'm not really sure, but definitely during COVID, the sales were available online. Is that still a thing? That is. Yeah. That is. Good. So there's something called Digital Cookie, oh. and um, there's apps for it. Nice. And the girls set up their own um, websites and put videos on to talk to their customers through a digital format. Very nice. Very nice. And I hope, you know, despite the challenges that sales are going well so far. Sales are going well so far. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I had to jump right into that. But before we go too far, I wanted to acknowledge that um, you have a pretty interesting background and diverse background. I saw that you're an Army veteran. I am. Thank you for your service. It looks like you uh, served both in Desert Storm and Desert Shield. I did. That's fantastic. And thank you so much. And then after uh, that, Um, you went into like the United Way and then eventually to Girl Scouts. So what led you from that service of our amazing country to nonprofit service? Oh, it's a great question. So when I was over in Desert Storm and it was the near the end of the war, we were getting finally getting messages from back home of mm-hmm. things that were going on back home. Yeah. And I remember one night I was walking the perimeter and I was a Patriot missile officer, um, and I always had the night shift um, as the executive officer. And so I'd walk the perimeter to check on the troops. And at the time, I was just thinking, you know, if if I were to change careers, what would I want to do? Mm-hmm. And I knew I needed to give back and serve and to continue to serve. Yeah. So after Desert Storm, and we deployed back to Germany, which is where I was stationed, and then I came back to the States, I decided that I wanted to do something closer to home and to start to work in nonprofit work. And so I made the career shift yeah. into working um, for a variety of nonprofits. Very cool. Ah, great story. So you made the shift, and like we said, there was a couple stops along the way, but you've been, how many years have you been with Girl Scouts now? Gosh, since 2008. Okay. So I was with the Los Angeles Council, Mm -hmm. and then they recruited me to come and take the CEO position here in San Diego back in 20, the end of 2016. The end of 2016. Okay. So it's been a few years. You know, looking at some of the different websites, Girl Scout websites, I know you have multiple, so... um, And this one that I ended on, it's going to go back to what we started with, your discussion about um, the value of the cookie program. But I'm going to quote what this says because I thought this was really cool. 
It said, she's not just selling a box of thin mints. She's gaining the confidence to pitch the first investor in her small business. So going from that, share a little bit more with us about the, you know, the real business mentality behind, um, you know, the cookie program, but overall with Girl Scouts. I'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of people just think of the cookies. When they think of the cookie program, they don't think of what the girl is experiencing. And there's a lot of firsts that the girls go through. Mm -hmm. So think of a five, six, seven, eight year old, right? They're the first time in front of a customer and not only asking the customer to support Um, the Girl Scouts and her troop by buying a a package of cookies, but also accepting rejection because there's a lot of people that walk by and say no. And some don't say anything at all. And what these girls learn is how to handle rejection. And most of them are saying, well, thank you very much and have a nice day. And I've heard stories from girls who say after they say that, uh, customers turn around and they actually come back and they they purchase a package of cookies from yeah. them because the Girl Scout was so kind yeah. to them. They might have been having a rough day. Sure. So the girls are learning so much more than the business acumen of running a business, which is pretty phenomenal at five, six, seven, even 15, 16, 17 year olds. Yeah. They're also learning about, you know, how to interact with people yeah. and how to provide really good customer service mm-hmm. and also to build their inner strength, their yeah. confidence, their courage. And by interacting with others, they they broaden their perspective of their life and, and what life is all about as yeah. well. So yeah, it's a yeah. pretty phenomenal program. And I think that point that you brought out about learning how to handle rejection is such a valuable life lesson. Um, and I know I feel bad, like I'll go to the grocery store and my wife's already bought like five packages of cookies from our you know friends who go to church with us. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm cookied out and I feel bad, but you know, so I have to say no, but, uh, or expand my waistline. But um, you know, it is such a valuable lesson to learn how to deal with that rejection because, you know, we, we jokingly talk about how this is the trophy generation and, you know, they get awards for everything in a sense. But um, when you get to real life, you do have to, you do have to deal with the fact that yeah. not everything goes your way. Yeah. And that's, um, it's a big lesson, especially this year. So more so than any other year, these last couple of years with COVID, there's been a lot of, you know, cancellations and disappointments. And throughout this time, Girl Scouts has stayed strong. And we have helped not only girls to persevere and build their resilience, but also their families. Yeah. Their parents, our troop leaders, um, for the most part, are the parents, our troop leaders. And so they're learning side by side with their girls. So through this, through the Girl Scouts, you know, we're kind of supporting each other. And in the bigger picture, in a bigger way, uh, through the cookie program, we're supporting the community yeah. by bringing a little taste of home and joy and, and maybe just a smile for somebody that's having a really rough time right now. I just welcome any girl out there who wants to become a Girl Scout. Don't hesitate. Talk to your mom, talk to your dad, talk to your caregiver, and encourage them to join. And more importantly, we need volunteers. Volunteers are what make Girl Scouts strong. It's our volunteers that allow us to serve as many girls as we're able to serve. Yeah, that's fantastic. Another thing I picked up from your website, it's continuing on this business theme. Obviously, I'm a chamber, so I love the business theme. So uh, there was a section, some kind of statement, something called Be a Boss. And it talked about, you know, um, helping the girls learn about making smart decisions and teamwork and all these kinds of ethics. And I thought that was a really neat, um, you know, I hadn't thought of that angle from what you guys teach and, and everything. And I'd love for you to share about that a little bit. The program of Girl Scouts, we have something called the Girl Scout Leadership Experience. And through the Girl Scout Leadership Experience, it's girls learning by leading. 
right? So it's the girls that are making the decisions. And how do you make a decision in a troop, right? So who is helping to make those decisions? The troop leaders are guiding it and facilitating, sure. but it's the girls stepping in to determine what goals are they going to set for the cookie program this year? What are they going to do with the revenue that they um, that they gear, earn from the cookie program? Some want to go to camp. Some want to do a trip. Some want to do community service. How do you make a decision around that? And it's those decision-making skills, those those team-building skills, those uh, goal-setting skills, they're learned in a troop. So yeah. think about that and the implications of that as they get older and how they're then able to come into a company and work for a company to make decisions, yeah. to build a team, to, um, to come into rejection or conflict yeah. and overcome that because they've built those soft skills at a young age. Those are huge. The ability to work in group decision making. I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, for those of us who work with boards of directors, right? <laughs> we know how challenging that can be sometimes. So yeah, getting that experience at such a young age is, is phenomenal. And you know, as we've already said, when things don't always um, go your way, uh, that's that's a valuable lesson. Well, we've been talking with Carol Diedrich from Girl Scout San Diego. We're going to take a brief pause and we'll be right back to talk more about all the great things going on with the Girl Scouts. So besides the cookie sales shifting for COVID-19, how else did COVID affect, you know, I, I can imagine from troop meetings to, you know, what all the camps, I mean, everything, what, what were all the implications that you guys had to deal with uh, in 2020 and maybe beyond? Yeah, so that first year, I think, was rough on everyone, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we pivoted quickly to provide a virtual program, like like a lot of organizations sure. also tried to do. Um, so we did virtual camps for our girls mm -hmm. and tried to make those camps um, where the girls were active. So our, we have phenomenal staff. It's just Girl Scout San Diego staff is probably some of the best professionals in, yeah. in the world. Um, I, I believe well, I might be a little biased, but <laughs> they came up with such creative ways of keeping the girls active and connected. Because I think through COVID, there is an isolation factor that yes. has affected our country, our community, our world. Yeah. And through Girl Scouts and the Girl Scout program, and again, the phenomenal staff came up with ways of how can we help girls and interact with each other in a virtual format where it's not just talking heads, that they actually get to communicate and they get to learn from each other, but they also get to be there for each other. Yeah. So building the skills of, of being compassionate and patient and maybe um, the listening skills of being there for each other and an understanding that they're not alone, yeah. that what they're going through others are going through as well. And together, we can become stronger. And I think through the camp experience, you know, we did the virtual camp experience, that showcased in, uh, a lot of the value of the program of Girl Scouts, because we got a lot of great feedback from um, the parents at how much they appreciated us continuing to go forward with the program. So we did virtual camp. We did a variety of virtual badges where the girls were nice. earning them, too. And then when we were able to open up a little bit, mm -hmm. We were meeting outside. Mm -hmm. So girls were still able to get outside and have their troop meetings and, again, earn badges, do community service projects, and go on hikes and do, you know, a variety of things that um, indoors they couldn't do, right. but outdoors they yeah. could do. Yeah, it's got to be one of the advantages of, of having such a outdoor focus with your group that you were able to shift things out there pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I another thanks to our volunteers because they're the ones that also are creative in, in making that happen. I, th I think the bottom line is that um, this organization is focused on building the next generation of leaders. And as we do that, we're learning alongside of them. So it's a constant um, kind of give and take and, and a cycle of, of giving. And, and the volunteers are learning and growing and experiencing and building bonds with each other as they're building them with the girls as well. Very nice. And so as we sit here today, you know, we were chatting off mic about 
we're all kind of glad to seeing, you know, Omicron tapering uh, rapidly, thank goodness. But are, are activities pretty much back to pre-COVID levels of engagement? And we're such? getting there. We're yeah. getting there. I think it's it's a transition, right? right. So um, there's a lot of buildup that's happening. Right now, a lot of our activities were, well, two years before, our activities were based out of the schools. So mm. we're working alongside schools to figure out how we can get back in with the schools and, and sure. reach more girls. Yeah. So that's our, that's our biggest challenge at this point. Um, And the other thing is, is helping, you know, parents and volunteers, because, you know, this, these last two years have been very difficult on on a lot of adults, and they're balancing a lot and juggling a lot of schedules and a lot of challenges. So we're there for them as well, helping them through this. And what we're finding is that they're building a stronger community and finding support and help um, that they're providing to each other. Yeah. As, as they're going through this, which then, um, you know, turns into support and help for the girls. Yeah. So is our summer camps? Full we did tilt? summer camp last yeah. year. Okay, good. Um, we're going to be doing it again this year. All right. Excellent. I know those are a big deal in the scouting world. And so you guys were founded, or it looks like you were started about 1912, so over 100 years old already. What's on the horizon? So this is our 110th anniversary, ah, which is amazing. Awesome. Um, so on the horizon, there's uh, there's a big focus on civics because mm. civics isn't being taught as much in schools right mm. now. So we have developed several badges where girls are learning at the different levels. So all of our badges are level-based, based on the age and the yeah. developmental stage of the girl. Um, so civics badges is a major component of, of our launch of new badges this year. Um, the other element that is so popular for girls is our STEM program, Mm. science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, And the other area is brain health or mental health. Um, That Girl Scouts has always been a part of building these soft skills in girls, but now we're being uh, even more intentional Mm. and trying to make it not such a stigma and something that you don't talk about. It is it is so important right now, and we've all experienced it and seen it, and it's yeah. becoming more and more critical that we have these conversations and that we learn how to work through these challenging times together and not, not hide from it. And especially at an early age, um, teaching these girls about the value of communication and learning these resilient skills, but also not feeling ashamed Mm. of some of the challenges that right. they might be facing. Right. Yeah, and obviously you pointed out a lot of the isolation stuff that came up through 2020 and and, and beyond. Yeah, it brought a lot of mental health issues to the forefront and um, exasperated stuff that was maybe below the surface. So yeah, being comfortable enough to share challenges in that realm I think is huge. Um, I love the uh, focus on STEM you know, uh, encouraging the girls that that's a path open for them as well. I think uh, they're growing in in those fields rapidly, which is great. But um, any encouragement. And then I love what you said about civics, though, because one of the things that is so challenging in our culture and our current society that is divisive is being able to talk civilly with people who have different opinions than we do and have a dialogue instead of a name calling session. I mean, I think that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a big part of what the civics badges are, are teaching the girls too, as they're exploring and understanding what the government's roles are. Um, Also exploring and understanding how to communicate a difference of opinion Mm -hmm. and, and bring that forward. And that's all about team building too. It's all about handling decision-making in a group. It's, it's all of those things that are basic, but that become so, well, as you said, divisive. Um, If they, if, if the individuals in the room that are having the discussion don't have the skill set or the experience to navigate through it. And those are the important skills that we're trying to teach the girls yeah. at this time. Love it. Anything we we missed that you wanted to make sure we, we knew? Because I definitely want to make sure we got any 
other talking points or, or points that you wanted to share about your amazing programs? Well, I know that these girls that are coming up, um, especially the ones that are participating in the cookie program, are going to be phenomenal entrepreneurs and business yes. leaders yes. in in our future. So yeah. I'm just I'm talking to the chamber That's members right. right now to say, you know, uh, when you're when you're looking to hire, yeah. ask if they were a Girl Scout and you're going to get a great employee. There is no doubt. So I will put that out there. The other thing I will put out there is for adults who want to give back and get involved in an incredible organization that is making a difference for generations to come, get involved in Girl Scouts. Because yeah. you not only will be giving back, but you'll be learning along the way and lifting up your own skill set mm-hmm. and your abilities, and it will make you feel good. And I think right now we all need to feel good. Yeah. I think that's an interesting point, though, because I, even myself, I probably wouldn't have thought of you know, I, I guess I think of most of the volunteers are directly connected, like a parent or maybe a grandparent or somebody like that connected to the kids in the program. I wouldn't have thought of just a, a community member volunteer, but it sounds like that's open. Oh, absolutely. It's it's any adult that wants to get involved in, in Girl Scouts and to support sure. to support this organization. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's that's probably our, our biggest um, need right now, mm-hmm. besides funding. Mm-hmm. Funding is really important to help us to reach more girls and to serve more girls, but also more volunteers. The more volunteers that we have, the more girls that we reach. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And I think you, you said it at the beginning when we were talking cookies, but um, how many girls are part of uh, our your organization for San Diego wide? There's about 15,000 wow. girls that are involved and, and most of them are involved in the cookie program this yeah. year. And we're growing again. So we oh, took wonderful. a big hit as most organizations yeah. did uh, these last two years. So we're, we're growing back up to where we were before. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for taking time to come and share about all the wonderful things that Girl Scout San Diego does and um, I, I agree with you, you know, you guys are part of our, our workforce development program out there. So to all our chamber members, you know, hire Girl Scouts. They're, they're already pre, pre-trained with soft skills for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on our Carlsbad People, Purpose and Impact podcast today. If you enjoyed it, please hit the follow button on wherever you get your audio. And please tell a friend. We would love to hear your feedback, which you can share at carlsbadpodcast.com. You can leave us a review, ask a question, or leave an audio comment, which we can play on the show in the future. And that's all we have for today. Can't wait to see you next time on Carlsbad People, Purpose, and Impact. And remember, share some kindness today. It's free, creates goodwill, and makes you feel great.